The title of this morning's sermon is No One Ever Spoke Like This Man. And this sermon is made up of three parts. Part one, summary. We've been going through the book of John and a whole lot has happened leading up to today's passage. So allow me to summarize and get us back up to speed. We took a break and it's been a while. Obviously, the book of John is all about Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. And what happened was this. Jesus came to us. He became flesh. He dwelt among us. And starting with the 12 disciples, he called people to repent of their sins and believe in him for their salvation. There were many miracles and signs and witnesses that showed that Jesus is indeed the Son of God. Jesus turned the water into wine. He cleansed the temple. He healed the sick and the lame. Do you remember these stories from John 1 to 6? He, healed, he, he fed the 5,000. He walked on the water of the sea. And John the Baptist was pointing people to him. Jesus was also teaching a lot. He taught the truth about his salvation. And so, for example, he spoke to Nicodemus. He spoke to the Samaritan woman. These were deep, profound conversations that he had with them. Nicodemus learned about being born again. And he learned how God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. There was the Samaritan woman. Remember her? The Samaritan woman at the well, she learned about living water and how Jesus is the Messiah that was promised. And so all this was happening and the news about Jesus began to spread throughout the land. Crowds started to follow him. But drama was beginning as well. And not the good kind of drama, the bad drama. Many people started to go against Jesus. You see, they thought that Jesus was breaking the law when he healed that man on the Sabbath day. They didn't like the fact that Jesus was saying, God is my father, I'm his son. They grumbled when Jesus said, I am the bread of heaven. They just couldn't stand that. They couldn't believe in Jesus and his salvation. And the fact that here was this guy who had no training, comes out of nowhere from Nazareth, and he's saying all these things. And so many people began to go against Jesus, and some even began to seek to kill him. And this hostility against Jesus becomes official at the Feast of Booths. That kind of brings us now to today's text. At this feast, I talked about this a few weeks ago, Jesus openly spoke about his identity, who he was, his authority, his truthfulness, his righteousness, and his, his glory. And the chief priests and the Pharisees, they got wind of this. And so what did they do? They sent the police. They sent their officers to arrest Jesus. Can you believe that? This is real. And so on the last day of this feast, Jesus, he stands up and he cries out these words. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Jesus saying, come to me. I am the living water. And that brings us to today's passage. Part two, division. When the people heard all that Jesus said in this feast, there was division. There was a moment of truth. It was as if a light suddenly sh turned on and shined upon the people because Jesus is the light. And the light shined in the darkness. And when that light turned on, everything got revealed. And the people, they revealed where they all stood. Some believed in Jesus. Some began to truly understand and believe in him. They were saying, this really is the prophet. 
These people were referring to the promise in Deuteronomy 18 that there would be someone who would come like Moses and be the ultimate final prophet. So they're saying, I think Jesus is this guy. There were other people who were saying, this is the Christ. This means that they began to believe that Jesus was the promised Messiah in the Old Testament. The Messiah who would come as the heir to the throne of David. And so praise the Lord. I mean, we should take a moment and just be like so happy that, so many, that there were people that began to believe in Jesus. But as I said a moment ago, there was division. In this moment of truth, this is where the drama begins to heat up. Oh, there were people that began to believe in Jesus, for real. There were also a lot of people that began to truly reject Jesus. There were people that said, is the Christ to come from Galilee? What they were saying there is they, they couldn't believe that anything good could come out of that area of the world. And other people, they were ironic. They said, has not the scripture said that the Christ comes from the offspring of David and comes from Bethlehem, the village where David was? Now, this is totally ironic because actually they're right. Yeah. The Savior comes from Bethlehem. The Savior is the offspring of David. But what they didn't know was that Jesus is this person. Jesus is from Bethlehem. Jesus is the offspring of David. They just didn't know they were right. For some strange reason, it didn't click. Maybe they just didn't hear, or if they heard, they just didn't believe. But the bottom line is, so many people rejected Jesus. This is very sad. We should take a moment and really think about that. That while there are people that believed in Jesus, there were many who rejected. They didn't believe in Jesus. And that is their foolishness. Let's think about this, Highland. Dear church, as we wait for Jesus in this old and fading world, as 2022 has gone and now a new year begins, may we know this. May we wake up and be sober-minded. Jesus brings division. Now, not division in the church, obviously, but division between the church and the world between the church who believes in Jesus and the rest of the world that does not Jesus brings division in human life side note we don't see it here often in America if you know your history America has been strangely blessed to be a quote Christian nation whatever that means and so for a a few hundreds of years, however old our nation is right now. There's not been much division between the church and non-believers here in America because Christianity was mixed with the culture, with what it meant to be American. But Highland, that's an, an anomaly. In the rest of the world, the division is very real, very dangerous, very serious. And we need to know this and wake up because America is changing and more and more division is coming. It is. I'm not a prophet, but it is kind of obvious the direction of our country and how the church, how Christians no longer have a welcomed seat at the table of society. This is division in reality. And you, as you grow up, 10 years later, 30 years later, as you raise your kids, you and your kids and our grandkids are going to be in this kind of world, which has always been like this, actually. If you read the Bible, it started with Cain and Abel, division. So there's nothing new under the sun. But Jesus 
in coming into this world, he magnifies what is already there because he is the Savior. And as he speaks, people believe and other people don't. And that division is palpable, especially as we go through the book of John. But listen to these words from another book, Luke 12, 51 to 53. This is actually Jesus speaking himself. He says this, Do you think that I have come to bring peace on the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. For from now on in one house there will be five divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. This is the word of the Lord. A lot of detail there, but the point there is simple. The division is real. Jesus brings it, and it's going to cut through even families. But Jesus brings this division because he is the light. And when when he shines upon this world, those who are of the light are drawn to the light. And those who are of the darkness draw back and turn away. And you will see this in your lifetime. So Highland, be ready. As we start this new year, let us be sober-minded and let us stand firm and draw near to Christ always. Be clear about where you stand as Jesus divides people up. Jesus said it, I come to divide. So if you know that, now here in this new year, know where you stand. Don't try to compromise. And don't try to think that you can have one foot planted in the kingdom of God and another foot planted in this world that is hostile to Jesus. You are children of light. You are not children of the darkness. So be in the light. Part three, let us boast in Jesus, our prophets. So Jesus says all these crazy things in the eyes of his enemies at this feast. And the chief priests and the Pharisees, what do they do? They send their officers. It's like their police. It's like their hit squad. They send their officers to go and arrest Jesus. But the crazy thing is, the officers couldn't do it. And the reason why they couldn't do it is so profound, so glorious. The people of darkness said to the officers, why did you not bring him? And the officers said these words, no one ever spoke like this man. No one ever spoke like Jesus. Highland, this this is awesome. This is so amazing. This is so cool. And there's even a little humor here. I bet the officers, now this is where I fully admit I'm making my own assumptions here, but I bet these officers were pretty big guys. They were the muscle so to speak, that worked for the chief priests and the Pharisees, the bad guys. And yet, these big guys were stopped in their tracks. They couldn't make a move against Jesus. They had no strength. They had no willpower to arrest him. But it wasn't because they were physically outmatched in any way. It wasn't even because they were scared of Jesus. Why couldn't they arrest him? It's because they were amazed by Jesus' words. They were struck by what Jesus said at the feast. They heard the words of the Lord. They heard the truth about the salvation of Jesus Christ, and they could not carry out their mission to arrest Jesus. They could not go against him. And they said, no one No one spoke like this man. 
We've never heard anything like this. We could not arrest him. I can, I can imagine Jesus saying at this feast, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. I can imagine Jesus saying that, and then I can imagine one of the officers, can you imagine they're all like in the back or they're all like scattered. They're like hiding in the crowd. I can imagine one officer thinking to himself, you know, I think I want this living water. No one ever spoke like this man. I can imagine another officer, and again, I'm thinking this is a big guy. Another officer, he's listening to Jesus' words, and he's, he looks down at the handcuffs, the chains that he's about to put on Jesus, and he, and he starts to break down in tears because he knows by the power of God's words, by just hearing Jesus speak the truth, I can imagine another officer breaking down, weeping, because he knows his life is a life of darkness and he wants to change. No one ever spoke like this man. And I can imagine a third officer, this third officer trembling in fear of the Lord because he realizes through the sovereign work of the Holy Spirit who works in his heart, I can imagine this officer realizing that this Jesus is no mere man, that in fact, this Jesus is God. This Jesus, come in the flesh, is the Son of God. And I can imagine this officer and many more trembling and ready to repent and believe. No one, no one ever spoke like this man. Highland, I can imagine this because the truth is, this is how we are saved. We are saved because Jesus has spoken. We are saved because Jesus speaks his powerful and his life-giving words to us. You are saved because Jesus is your chief prophet. There it is. Jesus is your prophet. The Son was ordained by the Father and anointed with the Spirit to be your prophet. And as your prophet, as your chief prophet, what does that mean? It means that Jesus teaches you. And he reveals to you your salvation in him. He fully reveals to you his secret counsel and his will concerning your redemption. Heidelberg Catechism, question 31. This is a huge part of what Jesus does. He carries out the work, the office of a prophet so that he can reveal to you your sin. He talks to you and he reveals to you your need of forgiveness. He talks to you words of grace. He tells you, this is how I save you. Come to me. Find rest in me. I am the living water. It's simple, Highland. Praise be to our God because Jesus has spoken to us. This is how we are saved. If Jesus does not speak, there is no salvation. If Jesus is not our prophet, then we are still dead in our sins. If Jesus is not who he is, and there's no hope for us. We can make up words of our own. We can write our own Bibles. We could talk to ourselves, talk to one another, gain wisdom on our own. And you know what? This world is doing just that. Words, not from Jesus, but from ourselves, from one another. 
but no one, no one speaks like Jesus. You need to know that this morning. Jesus has spoken. Do you realize that? You think it's such a simple concept. You might be thinking, P.A., I know that. Tell me something new. I can't tell you anything new. I tell you again, as 2023 starts, isn't it amazing that Jesus talks to us, that he has spoken to us as a prophet? That's how we're saved. And the way that he speaks to us now is through his written word, the Bible. The B-I-B-L-E. Highland, as we start 2023, one of the things that we need to change in our church, we need to do, do better at this, get better at this. We need to be more and more word-centered, Bible-driven. Highland, as we start this new year, think deeply about this. Be amazed and be changed. Jesus has words to say to you. In the last few years in this pandemic, let's be honest, you've had a lot of time to listen to Jesus. We had a lot of, a lot of free time happen, a lot of work from home, stay at home time, a lot of time to reflect, a lot of time to be, be on your own. Have we listened to Jesus? It's... I, I, <laughs> It's almost, I wonder, it's almost like, did Jesus give us this pandemic because he wanted us to stop and listen and wake up and be like, okay, Jesus, talk to me. I need to hear your words. I wonder about that. As we're kind of getting out of this pandemic, as we start this new year, I urge us all to understand that Jesus has so much to say to us. I mean, your Bible, our Bibles are so big, so thick. It doesn't feel like that now because now it's on our phones and it's all digital. But our shepherd king has so much to say to us. And so let's listen to him. Let's commit ourselves this year and for the rest of our lives to read God's word, that is the Bible. That's Jesus' speaking to us. Let's take his words more and more seriously, not just being hearers of the word, but doers of the word. This is Christian life in its purest form. Jesus speaks, we listen, and the rest is history. We are sheep who are always listening attentively to the voice of our shepherd. That's my hope personally for 2023. That's my hope for all of us as a church. Highland, no one ever spoke like this man. In closing, we see Nicodemus at the end of this uh, passage and how he stood up for Jesus. The Pharisees and the people against Jesus wanted him arrested, but Nicodemus stands up and he says, does our law judge a man without first giving him a hearing and learning what he does? A few chapters earlier, Nicodemus was struggling to understand what it meant to be born again. But now here in, chapter, chapter, uh, in this chapter, by God's grace, we see here Nicodemus taking a, a small step forward. By God's grace, Nicodemus speaking up, being a little prophet himself, the truth, and recommending logic and justice before the Pharisees as they were hypocritically being illogical and unjust toward Jesus. That can happen to us too. The officers said, no one ever spoke like this man. But you know what's cool when we start to really listen to Jesus? When we start to meditate upon his words, our meditation flows into imitation. And 
we begin to sound like Jesus. And that is cool. Nicodemus started to reflect and sound like Jesus. And how awesome would it be if we too reflected the wonderful words of Jesus in our own words, in our conversations with our spouses, in our talks with our friends, in our dialogue with our family members, or in the chat rooms and social media, or in any conversations we have here at church. Jesus is our chief prophet. And you too hold the office of prophet in Christ. This is your work. Let us speak like Jesus. And what a high compliment it would be for people to say about us, wow, we've never heard anyone speak like that. May the Lord bless you this 2023. Let us marvel at how Jesus changes our lives through his word. Let's read the Bible more. Come, Lord Jesus, come soon. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this time. We thank you for your word. Father, we pray that we will be men and women of your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.